I've got this teeny tiny Blazor Quick Grid example here. And as you can see, these are just a list of products in essence with only a name. And I also implemented the pagination feature of a quick grid. If you don't know quick grid yet, please have a look at the info card here or just keep watching because I, or at least I try to explain also the base features a little from quick grid because the thing I did here is simply using quick grid here, the new feature that is coming up integrated in .NET 8, but you can also get it here with .NET 7. Just have a look here on uh, new get and here then you can see regarding the installed packages there's the 010 alpha you can use with .NET 7 but there's also a .NET 8 version coming up so this just for your information so when you're using this what you can do is you've got a built-in data grid right with uh, a blazer itself built in with blazer like all the other built-in components like an input text field for instance and here now i am using a list of products and the only thing i want to display is the name when we have a quick look again here this is how the product looks again pretty simple and then I'm also using an EF core in memory database called product DB. And then I just see the data here. And in my controller of my web API, what I'm going to do is I ensure this thing is created. You only have to do this for the in memory database. And then it simply returns all the products. And this is the problem many have with the quick grid that if you want to uh, add pagination for instance you still have to well it seems you have to get all the products all the data first and then in your client you can use the paginator here to skip through all the items but what if you don't want to use that right you see it here items per page is five and let me now open the uh console and reload this application then we see this call getting all the data and what you want is when you skip the page that it also only then gets the next items. So here for the first page, I would want to get only five items and then on the next page again, five and not 10 right at the beginning. So how would we do that? Well, there is the so-called grid items provider that comes built in again with a quick grid and how would you implement this thing well let's just do that together i'd say first thing we need is the grid items provider with a type and in our case that would be the products could be now so here now we say products provider like that and then instead of this call here what we're going to do is we will add the products provider like that. And then here we have a little function with the request as a parameter. And in here then, what we want to do is we say our response now is again, await HTTP get from JSON async with again the stuff that we are expecting. So for a list of products and again also the URI. So, so far not that different actually, right? And after that, and this is important, we also return a grid items provider result. So grid items provider results from, and now here what we have to set is first the items, which in our case is simply the response. And then we also need the total items count. So this would then help regarding the uh, pagination, for instance, right? So total item count then would be in our case, magic number 10, but we will change that in a sec so this is what we have to do and we actually don't want to set the products here because now instead of the items here we want to use the items provider and in our case then that would be again the products provider all right what this thing is going to do simply is again using a web service call but it's more built in, right? So it is now using this provider thingy here and there are important features that we want to use because when we do it like that, it 
is not the expected result, I guess, because as you can see here, we do the call. That's nice. Let me, let me just refresh this again so you see it. We're making this call here, all right, but we're again getting all items, of course, because this is what the controller gives us. And when we switch the page, we're making another call. So this is new and this is great actually, but again, we get all the items here and this is not what we want. So how would we change that? Well, let me tell you now here in this URL, we can change something because this rec object here, almost this rec object here has some data and that would be the start index. This is important. And then another thing that we want to choose actually here is the count. So start index means where in the whole list of products we want to start. So what is the first item we want to get? Is it the item zero? Is it the item five? Is it the item 10? Whatever it is. And then the with count, we want to tell the API that how many items from the starting point, from the start index, we actually want to get. So now that's nice, but we also have to, well, then change our controller to make this work. So how would that look? Well, if you're using Entity Framework, this is actually pretty simple because here we've got our products list and Entity Framework then provides two functions. And the first one would be skip. And as you can see here, bypasses a specified number of elements in a sequence and then returns the remaining elements. So this means if we get now the value five here, for instance, then Entity Framework would start with the product or with the fifth product in the complete list of products, all right? And then we've got another function, which is take and this thing then, okay, now it's not showing me what or how it works because the, there is this error. So we first have to change something here. Of course, we have to enter some variables. So let's say we just call this skip and take. So now this is skip, and this is take. And now we see returns a specified number of contiguous, contiguous elements from the start of a sequence. So again, for instance, if the values are five and five, or five and 10, and then, then it says, start with item number five, but then give me 10 of the, of the next, of the remaining items. We also have to change our route here. So this would mean, for instance, we just add skip here and then also take like that. All right. And that's it. This is the change we need here in our controller. And now back to the index razor. This is also already everything we have changed. Again, this is hard coded, so let me change that in a sec. But in essence, this is already everything we have to do. And it is reloading, great. And you see now, the call is different now, right? So here we see five and again, five, but these are the next five. Isn't that great? Now, what happens? because of my magic number, if we just add another item, another product, so back to the data context here and to my seed data, seeded data. And here now I just say ID 11, and this would be then the last of us, the game or the series, restart. And it is telling us that we still have only 10 items and that's it. Right, so not that great. So how can we change that? Well, of course, there are many ways to do that. But one way I guess is nice would be to add simply a DTO called, for instance, respond, uh, response products, response, something like that. And let's make this a public record struct, for instance, product response. And here now we've got a list of products called products. And here now we've got our count. All right, something like that. And here then in our controller, again, many ways to do this. We say our count is actually await products count async. And here we actually now return a product response and close this bracket here again. Now here we've got a new product 
uh, response with our products and the count. I know maybe a bit dirty, but I think you're here to learn something and I hope you do, even though this is a little dirty, but this should work. So here now in our clients, we now say that we're actually expecting a product response and the items now are the response products and here now we've got the response count save everything restart the application reloading now we've got 11 right and here we see the calls so the count is still 11 always of course got this but we've got a third page now with also the last of us isn't that nice and that's how you get remote data built in with your quick grid. code is available on github and if you learned something i'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel it does make a difference thank you very much for that for more information check out my newsletter and maybe you're interested in the dot and web academy because there we do lots of stuff like that so maybe you should check out the video description. Thanks a lot for watching and I see you next time. Take care.